Uh, next up is um, Alberto San Giovanni Vincentelli from uh, the University of California, Berkeley, another DTI um, grantee, and he'll be speaking about his project on detection and containment of emerging diseases using AI techniques. Thank you. And thank you very much. Okay. So uh, this is a project in collaboration between uh, the University of California at Berkeley, uh, this UCSF, uh, University of California, San Francisco, and the University of Chicago. Uh, now, the, uh, our project consists of four trusts. The first one is uh, related to the problem of uh, a rapid identification of emerging diseases. So, it's not only related to the COVID uh, situation, but also is trying to help in case a new pandemic, God help us, uh, will uh, uh, start. So that we want to be ready to detect it as soon as possible to contain its uh, spreading. The second thrust is about adapting what we have to emerging diseases. So if you have a new disease, what you would like to try to use whatever you know about other diseases and see if you can adapt this information to the new uh, emerging disease. The uh, third thrust is about um, deploying a proliferating uh, models that we build for emerging diseases across different geographies and also health organizations, different hospitals, different nations. So can we transfer information that we had from Italy or from China to United States to help uh, cope with the pandemic. And then the last but not least is the collaborative AI for healthcare. So we would like to, to study models in which humans and uh, algorithms can uh, uh, play together uh, to uh, get better results, overall results. So this uh, effort, there are three PIs. So Geoff Tyson is uh, from UCSF, Yusin Chen is uh, from the University of Chicago. And then we have a number of uh, students that are from various locations that are uh, essentially doing the serious work. I mean, the, uh, the detailed work and the analysis of the data. So you see there is quite a lot of people. It's about 11 people altogether. So let's uh, now focus on the uh, thrust one. So the rapid identification of novel diseases. So uh, we would like to, uh, model uh, this problem in terms of out of uh, uh, distribution detection. So uh, we were uh, quite active in using this kind of approach for detecting whether a air conditioning system is starting degrading and uh, showing uh, faults. The idea here is uh, if we have a, a new disease, they will uh, present when uh, measure, when some analysis perform, and something that you have not seen before. So it's an out of distribution. So you have seen, for example, results for uh, condition, lung conditions uh, that we see uh, here on the left in on the bottom of the slide. And these are in distribution data. So what we know about lung diseases. Now, out of distribution data can be of different kinds. So one thing that's nothing to do with it, it's just a mistake. There was a dog picture that uh, showed up into the uh, set of data that we are analyzing. Or a picture like uh, the second one uh, that you see here, and this one is taken actually, instead of being taken correctly, it's being taken incorrectly. So it's nothing that resembles what we have in, uh, in our database. And finally, the third one is what interests us, is novel pathology. So these x-rays don't look like anything like what we used to. And then we had to identify uh, this situation here because then we would say, we really have never seen something like this. So the, uh, uh, the way in which you can uh, depict what an out of distribution data detection looks like is uh, you see here there are dark blue dots, light blue and red dots. So the dark blue are in distribution development set of data. The light blue is the test set data and the red dots are the ones that are not in the test set, are outliers. 
Now, um, if we have a method that can discriminate, we can have, you see this uh, dotted line here. Uh, we see that uh, it, it has been able to detect the rats of the outliers, but it's also called an outlier, uh, the uh, sum of the uh, blue test set. And so this one is not desirable because we are going to label something that is perfectly fine as being a, a problem. Now, a, a different algorithm may do this, detection algorithm may do this. Now, this one is fine because it has very few false alarms, but it doesn't get the out of distribution data. So there is always a contrast between what you want to, to get and what you are willing to, to take in terms of uh, uh, false alarms. Uh, <clears throat> now, um, what have we done here? So most of the previous literature um, is trying to get a predictive model. And then at the end of the predictive model, like for example, a neural network with uh, logit and softmax sigmoid block to say, yes, no, uh, this one is in, in distribution, is out of distribution. Uh, now, uh, this kind of approach uh, works well for multi-class classification tasks, but not for multi-label. Now, when we have healthcare and especially conditions like COVID and so on, we cannot trust just one single label. We may have a number of labels and these simple methods uh, don't perform that well at all. And so um, we are trying to uh, augment this particular model uh, by uh, doing a two steps uh, approach. So first one is to do what has been done before, but the second one is actually to uh, uh, take the outputs of the logits and feed it into a uh, one class uh, support vector machine to extract more information than simply this threshold information. Now, by doing that, actually, we have been uh, able to outperform uh, some of the uh, methods that are used to classify uh, um, uh, X-rays. So in particular, we look at 500 COVID images. Um, in this particular case, uh, we kept 5% of false alarm rate uh, on the Czech expert data set. So there are 220,000 uh, normal uh, images uh, with 500 COVID images. So we want to be able to recognize these 500 COVID images out of 220,000 normal. Uh, now, uh, if we keep the 5% false alarm rate as a uh, constant and we apply our method versus what is known, you can see that uh, according to a number of particular networks, uh, adding this additional step has been able to improve the detection rate for out of distribution data by at least an order of magnitude. Uh, as you can see, the column on the right is representing uh, the improvement over what we have been able to do. Now, um, what are the next steps in, uh, in our research in this particular thrust is that we would like to evaluate different approaches to um, add on to the predictive model that we show you before. And so not only uh, uh, looking at uh, modalities besides checks uh, X-rays, also looking at uh, additional medical image data set, and in particular, the help of, United, uh, of Universal California San Francisco is essential because they have a lot of real data that we would like to, uh, to um, uh, uh, leverage. Now, uh, the other important point is that, well, we are using uh, one class support vector machine. What, what if we use the isolation forest or uh, local outlier factor as other uh, uh, additional processing that we may use in, uh, in this domain? Um, last but not least, we observe that according to different problem domains, we may be uh, better choosing isolation forest or local outlier factor or OCSVM. Um, then uh, we would like to select and combine different OOD detectors according to the particular problem domains to select one that performs well in this problem domain 
and then finally deploy. Uh, now, the, uh, we would like also to, to have an automatic way of selecting uh, this uh, per, uh, combination that will give us the best result. And uh, in addition to the particular uh, OOD detector, we would like also to see what are the hyperparameters that we should use on the basic uh, uh, machine learning algorithm that we um, uh, would like to explore. Now, the thrust two is about adapting existing healthcare AI tools to emerging diseases. Now, in this particular case, when you have a new uh, disease that is coming up, you don't have much labeled data as you have in uh, well-known diseases like pneumonia or interstitial pneumonia and so on. So we may miss important information about variation in age, history of illness, social economic status, or the range of disease severity. And in addition, there are sometimes poor labels with high variability among the different inputs. So um, how can we uh, improve upon this situation? Well, uh, we thought that what we can do is to generate synthetic data that we could add to the set of uh, test cases so that the training is uh, uh, much more powerful than if we had only the label data that comes from the uh, new disease. In order to do that, we uh, are uh, using uh, a, a flow-based generator that is uh, capable of appending uh, additional test set by looking at uh, the COVID classifier for CT scan and X-ray data. And then we uh, it, to, to see whether our uh, uh, synthetic data generation is effective, uh, we compare classification accuracy based on a classifier train on original train data and then one of the synthetic data and then comparing the outputs. Now, if these two are closed, then of course, we our synthetic generator is capable of adding important information to the uh, test set so that our uh, uh, learning uh, uh, for COVID is uh, much improved. Now, we can also use a qualitative uh, analysis with a fresh inception distance between the original and the synthetic samples. Uh, now, um, in this one, are, are data that we obtain uh, with a qualitative and a quantitative analysis uh, applied to CT scan and X-ray, so the original images and the synthetic generation. And we see that the... Uh, uh, data obtained by using only the synthetic uh, uh, images, uh, we can get a, a accuracy of 95.8, while the original uh, um, data that are the real data gave us 98.43. So the difference is minimal, which means that our synthetic generated uh, data is quite close to what the real data look like. And so this gives us uh, a good confidence in the uh, generation process. Now, the uh, third thrust is about, you know, to develop robust methods. And here, what we would like to, to do is to um, use domain adaptation techniques to transfer a model train on one domain, for example, with labeled data, and test in another domain, uh, which doesn't have labeled data. So, uh, the, the key question is that how much labeled data we really require to be capable of uh, transferring information from one domain to another. Uh, so we uh, can see here the label source domain can be the CT scan and on the right we have the X-ray uh, information. And we like to transport what we know about the uh, CT scan onto the X-rays uh, to be able to uh, improve uh, the analysis. So uh, we are using a three-step approach to this, to, uh, to this ad domain adaptation. First, we uh, do an in-domain prototypical contrastive learning. Then we give this to a cross-domain instance prototype uh, self-supervised learning. And then we do an adaptive prototypical classifier learning. 
So this uh, framework, which is uh, represented in the picture that you see before, is um, uh, compare, as compared to different methods that you can find in the literature, um, the uh, results are quite impressive. Uh, if you look at the area under the curve of baseline, for example, is 89.3, but our uh, complex sequence of uh, operation gives us 97.4. Uh, the second best is around 93. So it, uh, given the um, uh, importance of this analysis, uh, the, uh, even if it is a few percent away, like four or five percent, is significant uh, to underline the power of the method itself. Now, uh, the last thrust is about AI-assisted decision-making with human in the loop. So, uh, this, what we would like to, uh, to do is, again, to have an interactive AI system uh, that uh, uh, deals with the environment, which are human annotators, medical professionals, uh, and so on, and try then to uh, generate a combined approach, which could be quite effective. In particular, what we would like to do is not only to get the... Uh, environment, the human annotator, to tell us, uh, yes, you are right, no, you are not right. But we would like to, to give it a, a set of explanations so that this uh, uh, information can be of use to teach other uh, people, medical uh, professionals or students, how to uh, interpret data that have been digested uh, from an AI system so that they can come up with a, a better um, uh, diagnosis. Uh, so uh, there are two, uh, we wrote, uh, I mean, our team wrote a couple of papers about using a principal approach for optimizing human learning, on one uh, case, and the other one, intuitive teaching interaction, which is what I was talking about. Be beyond yes and no, you want to give explanation, logic, rule of language, and advices. So the next step in this uh, domain is to uh, automatically generate explanation for COVID positive images. And we would like to evaluate our prototype interactive algorithm with the specific of the COVID diagnosis. So in summary, in the uh, rapid identification of novel disease, the progress is that we have uh, obtained significant performance gain from ML-based uh, out of uh, distribution detection method. And we would like, again, to expand our approach on additional data set and uh, data modalities plus different uh, algorithms. For TRAS2, actually, it, unfortunately, I uh, share the screen on an older version of the presentation. Uh, we obtain a, a, a very powerful method to generate uh, artificial images to improve the performance of the, of the classification. For FRAS3, we have developed this domain adaptation uh, techniques to, uh, to make our method more robust. And for FRAS4, we have done, we have developed active learning teaching algorithms, and we propose again to evaluate uh, additional uh, method on realistic data sets for active diagnosis. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, uh, I would be glad to answer. Thank you very much, Alberto. Uh, we have time, a minute maybe, for questions. Let's see. Uh, Stefano, you had a question. Did you, uh, would, would you like to unmute and ask Alberto? OK, good. Uh, good afternoon. I want to ask you in this synthetic data that you try to yes. generate it yes. for the, um, let's say, detecting emerging disease. diseases. Are you considering also the environmental and climatological, let's say, component on the issue related with the uh, impact of uh, new emergency, let's say, disease? We are working in Mediterranean countries, right. and what we are, let's say, trying to identify is the, yes. through this synthetic data, yes. the impact of, for instance, uh, a volcanics area mm -hmm. on emergency new disease. And then I think it's quite similar with your approach. Yes. Can you maybe yes, well, clarify something? Thank you. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the generation of synthetic data 
is essentially trying to mimic reality, right? So, and uh, the uh, whole idea is to try to combine information that you have from different data and then generate uh, uh, data which come out from the combination of, of the two. So for example, uh, if you have data about smokers, right? Men smokers uh, and the impact of uh, smoking in men on the COVID outcome, you would like to take this data and try to move it to women. So can we transform, synthesize data that will tell us how women smokers react to COVID? So, and if you want to, again, to, to look at uh, in, environmental uh, impact uh, over COVID, you should do something similar. So you should look at, for example, some of the data that you can capture and then try to combine what you've seen to generate a synthetic uh, set of data that combine various factors from different uh, information that you have about the environment. Yes, but then you need a very large database. That's why in order to study the, let's say, the profile of the climate or on environmental issue. Oh, yeah, well, that, that, that is not, yeah, yeah that, that's always a problem. But the point is that uh, what you try to do is you try to uh, invent in uh, situations where you actually inventing the impact of the environment on, uh, on, on particular, like the development of COVID, right? So you have an existing database that may tell you something about how the COVID is related to the climate situation. And then based on this information, you try to generate a, an additional yes. set of information. And, and then you will have to have someone who's going to look at it and say, well, this is reasonable or not, right? So you have to have some evaluation that comes out of it. But for example, it, there have been a situation where you can, uh, using this uh, synthetic data generation with flow method, in which you can generate artificial faces, right? And they are very realistic so that they can even fool a, a human. And, and that is, uh, again, is, put, is putting together information, partial information for different uh, data sets and then combining them to, to yield something that has not been seen before. Thank you. Great, thank you very much again, Alberto. Sure.